Did Moses write the first five books of the Bible? It's a popular belief, but in this video, I'm going to explore four reasons why that's highly unlikely from a biblical scholarship perspective. Most readers of the Bible probably don't believe that it's a magic book that fell from heaven right into a hotel drawer. Regardless of what one believes about divine inspiration, real people wrote these 66 books that make up the Bible. And what most of the biblical authors have in common with online hackers and that person who leaves passive aggressive notes in your workplace kitchen is that they were anonymous. So let's start at the genesis of this whole thing. And by that, I do mean the book of Genesis. See, the first five books of the Bible are sometimes called the Pentateuch or Torah. Traditionally, these are sometimes called the books of Moses. So did Moses actually write them? Whether or not there was a historical Moses is another topic altogether. But if there was, then according to the dates in the Bible, he would have lived sometime between 1500 and 1200 BC. The traditional explanation is that he received the writings from God when he went up the mountain to get the Ten Commandments. But when we take a close look at the Bible, it's clear that it's unlikely that these five massive books were the work of a single hand or even a single supervisor. So here are four of the reasons most biblical scholars from all sides of the spectrum don't believe Moses wrote the Pentateuch. Firstly, Deuteronomy contains the account of Moses' own death, and it's hard to imagine him writing his own death down. Oh, and before you go, I'm going to need you to add just one little extra bit. It's nothing, really. Uh, so at the end, just put that you die and everyone's really sad. Wait, what? Don't worry, you can put some stuff about how you are really great and there'll be no one like you. Well, how do I die? I've said too much. Some might rebut and say, well, he wrote most of it and his students added to it after he died. But if someone is okay with the idea of other people writing part of the Torah without his supervision, then one would have to concede that the Pentateuch as an authoritative religious text doesn't rest on the fact that Moses wrote it down all by himself. The second problem is that in the Pentateuch, there is language, places, names, and settings which simply didn't exist at the time Moses would have lived, but which came into existence centuries after Moses died. For example, several of the people groups mentioned, such as the Chaldeans and the Arameans, don't appear until centuries after the time of Moses. The Egyptian names in the Joseph story were not in use until late period Egypt. Or what about domesticated camels, which weren't used in Israel until centuries after Moses? These are just a few examples, but a close study of these books reveals many more details like this. Now, someone might say that later translators updated the earlier language, which we know scribes did all the time throughout the Bible. But this still means that the actual words, a historical Moses was purported to have written have been updated. And just like my iPhone after 12 months, it's not the same as it once was. The third reason is nowhere in the Bible does it actually say Moses wrote Genesis to Deuteronomy. In the Exodus story, he is said to be responsible for writing the Ten Commandments, and the book of Deuteronomy is framed as a series of speeches that Moses gave as a literary device. But nowhere is the suggestion that the whole of Genesis through to Deuteronomy was penned by Moses himself or even his students. Now, a few times in the Bible, there are references to the law of Moses, such as in Ezra 7.6. Some take this as a suggestion that he was the author of the books of the law, the Torah. What was actually happening here is Moses had become a figurehead to represent the Torah in the Bible. We don't know if the ancient Israelites personally believed Moses actually wrote the books himself. Most of the Hebrew Bible was written at a time when ascribing authorship was not common. But in the Hellenistic period, after contact with Greek ideas of authorship, the rabbis would have felt compelled to ascribe books to individuals. 
and the Pentateuch was ascribed to Moses. This is the context in which Jesus himself in the first century refers to specific commands written by Moses. And so while it's possible Jesus may have believed Moses wrote some of the Pentateuch or possibly specific commands, he could have also just as easily been using Moses as an archetypal figure, someone who represented the law in the common understanding of the day. It's not clear any of Jesus' references to the laws of Moses should be equated with actual authorship. We can only speculate what someone in the first century really thought because it's not until centuries later that a rabbi explicitly suggested the following. Moses wrote his own book and the section concerning Balaam. This wasn't written until sometime between 200 and 500 AD in the Babylonian Talmud. And it's the first explicit reference to Moses being the author of the Pentateuch. The fourth and final reason is that the vast majority of biblical scholars scholars believe the Pentateuch to be a complex literary composition made up of several distinct sources. You may have heard of something called the documentary hypothesis, which ascribes authorship of the text to four main sources, J, E, P, and D, letters representing their distinct theologies. So rather than Genesis to Deuteronomy being written by a single person, scholars believe the final text has been interwoven from multiple sources. This theory has developed considerably from where it started, and scholars now understand the Pentateuch to be even more complex and nuanced than these four broad categories. But nonetheless, there is strong agreement among scholars that Genesis to Deuteronomy is a composition made up of multiple sources over the course of several centuries. While parts of the Pentateuch may have been based on prior written and oral sources, scholars believe the project of composing and editing what we know as the Pentateuch began in the 6th century following Babylonian captivity and continued over the following several centuries. This is a long time removed from any possible historical Moses. If you want to learn more about this, I'll include some further reading in the credits and description of this video. None of this is to take away the importance of these books for faith communities. It's only to say that this importance doesn't have to reside from Moses having written it. And our understanding of the message of these narratives in their ancient context is enhanced by studying the social and political climate these works were composed in. Genesis through to Deuteronomy contains multiple voices from multiple different perspectives, representing the ancient Israelites at different times and in different situations. Ultimately, it's a beautiful, rich tapestry that still has meaning for people today, regardless of the fact that we don't know who wrote it down. Commandment number 11, share and comment below.